Hello, Professor Toybox here along with Phineas, and today I'm going to implement the first activity in my Danville toy box, namely distracting Candace so we can leave the yard. <laughs> this activity consists of two parts that we need to build. In the first part, the game will automatically bring the player back to the yard if they wander too far away, and Candace will scold them. In the second part, the player needs to find some way to distract Candace so they can leave the yard. So let's start with the first of it. And to save a little time, I've already placed all of the creativity toys that I'm going to need today. And I'll just show you what I've got. So we have a target camera, a dynamic trigger, a text displayer, two time displayer or two time delayers, a logic gate a randomizer, and another text displayer. So we've got two time delayers and two text displayers. I've also got this sound effects generator from the gameplay toys drawer and a button. And over here I've got another button with a level starter. And I've also dropped a trigger area around the phone booth. So that's what I've done so far, and all I've done is place those toys out of the Creativity Toys drawer. And did I mention the checkpoint? Uh, I can't remember. But anyway, that's where I've placed the checkpoint. It's lined up with the edge of the building and the edge of the patio there, with the red dot facing in that direction. Okay, so this is what I've got so far. These are all the Creativity Toys that we're going to need. So the first thing we're going to do is put Candace out of the Disney Infinity Townspeople drawer into my toy box. And I'll place her. And then I immediately want to select her and get into the properties. And I'm going to put her to sleep temporarily so she doesn't wander off. There we go. <laughs> and then we're going to have her stand still. And now I'm going to pick her up and we're going to put her on the patio. And since we can't put her directly there, we can drop her <laughs> from above. So it's kind of stupid that it doesn't let us put it there, but we can put her there indirectly. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, let's go ahead and hook up our dynamic trigger. So open the logic menu for that. We're going to do a new actor connection. And we're going to connect this to Candace. And she will be the actor for the dynamic trigger. And on the dynamic trigger properties, the target is going to be the connected actor. And for the trigger distance, I'm going to set this to 44. So that now creates a 44 unit wide radius around Candace, which is basically 11 blocks, an 11 block radius around Candace. All right, and that takes care of the dynamic trigger. Now let's go ahead and set up the camera properties. So we'll come in here. The start transition is fine. We're going to turn off the use or turn on the use defined duration and I'm going to set the Display duration to four seconds. Follow, cut, triggering player on camera target needs to be the connected actor. And everything else is fine. Okay, so this dynamic trigger is on by default when the player enters the toy box. And the radius that this sets up around Candace will include the start pad over here. So when the player enters the toy box, they are within the radius of that dynamic trigger. They're within that 11 block radius area around Candace. And so when they leave that area, we need to bring them back to the yard. And so what we're going to do then is uh, go into the dynamic trigger and do a new logic connection. 
when exited by player any. Now there's three things that I want to do in response to this. The first one is we're going to activate our target camera. And by the way, the target camera, we're going to do a new actor connection and connect that to Candace as well. That'll be our camera target. So there we go. Now the camera's set up and ready. And then that'll display for four seconds. Next thing we'll do is a new logic connection on the dynamic trigger when exited by player any. We're going to come to the text displayer over here and out of this category, we're going to come down to Angry. And she's going to say, what do you think you're doing? And on the properties for this text displayer, we'll set the text duration to be 4 seconds, and the text style will be Banner. So it'll display right across the screen. Won't be difficult to miss. And the last thing our dynamic trigger needs to do, we'll do a new logic connection on that when exited by player any. We want to come over to our checkpoint and teleport the player to this point. And I'm going to do all players. All right, and on the properties for this, None individual players available for all, and we'll turn on the hidden flag so when we're playing you can't see the checkpoint. Okay, so that's basically it. So now when you move outside of that 11 block radius around Candace, which will be about this point, going around Candace, <laughs> um, it's going to automatically automatically teleport you over here, turn on the camera, and she's going to scold you and say, what do you think you're doing? Now, as I said, the player is going to start inside this trigger area because that's where I've placed the start pad. And the behavior that the dynamic trigger triggers is done when the player leaves this area. As you saw the logic connections that I did, it's when the player exits the area. Now, one thing that is really important to be aware of is the fact that this happens not only when the player walks out of this area, but also when you open the toy box editor. And I'm already in the editor, so I'm okay at the moment. But if I come out of the out of spark mode and out of the editor, and I walk outside of this trigger area, <laughs> uh, it'll bring me back to this checkpoint. But if I'm inside this trigger area and I try to open the editor, um, that's going to also invoke the checkpoint and try to teleport the player. And on my Wii U, this causes problems with the editor and prevents me from being able to place any new toys or edit anything. And so it's very important to have a way to disable this activity and this behavior and to verify that it works before you save your toy box. Because again, you save your toy box, you go out, you come back in, you start in this area, and you will not be able to open the editor um, without having problems. At least that's been my experience. And so I've got this button over here that I've placed on the other side of this fence that I'm going to use when I'm wanting to edit my toy box. And we're going to be using this a lot, or at least I am offline, and you will too. And we're going to use this to do that. So on this button, we're going to do a new logic connection. When pressed, we're going to come over here to the dynamic trigger. Oops. And we're going to turn it off. And so when I enter the toy box and I'm in this area, I can come hop over this fence and press the button. And then I can safely open the editor because this dynamic trigger will be turned off. And so that's really important. Now, turning that off means I need a way to turn it back on <laughs> when I'm ready to start playing. And so 
we're going to come over to our level starter to do that. And so on the level starter, we're going to do a new logic connection on Catalyze. I'm going to come over here and turn on this dynamic trigger. And then since I'm already in the toy box, I need a button to invoke that. So that's why I have this button here. So we'll do a new logic connection when pressed. And we will start the level starter, which will turn this back on. Okay. So at this point, everything is set up with this. And we can go ahead and test this part of it. This is the first part of our activity. So I'm coming out of the editor now. And I am inside of this radius. And so now when we leave the area, she says, what do you think you're doing? And here we are back inside the yard. And again, she's going to do this now all the time. And just to show you what I mean, I'm going to come into the editor. And she says, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> And sometimes this will actually uh, not allow me to even use the editor. It's working this time. Sometimes I can't do that. And so that's why I have this button over here. So now I can push that. And now I can leave this area. That dynamic trigger has been disabled. And I can go as far as I want, wherever I need to in this toy box. I can open up the editor. And you'll notice there's no text displayed for her. And that's good. And then to retest it, or to restart it, we can come over here and hit this button, which will turn that dynamic trigger back on. So that's the first part of our activity here. And now we've got uh, Candace <laughs> catching us when we leave the yard and bringing us back to the yard. So that's really good. But now we need a way to distract her. And that brings us to the second part of the activity, which is distracting her. Excuse me. And so what we have, I've got a trigger area around the phone booth. And the phone booth is within the radius. And so this is what we're going to use to kick off the second part of the activity once we find the phone booth and approach it. And what I want to have happen is I want to have the telephone ring and Candace pick up and start talking. And so to do that, what we're going to do is on the trigger area here, we'll do a new logic connection when entered by player Annie. We're going to come over to our first... Uh, well, let's go over here first. Let's do this in order. And we're going to come to the sound effects generator. And unfortunately, we do not have a telephone sound, which I find really interesting that they would have missed that. I went through these categories and I couldn't find one. So what I've done is build my own. So if we come under general, and we have to scroll almost all the way down to the bottom to find the one sound that sounds like a bell. We have the school bell. So entering this trigger area will play the school bell. And the school bell is just a solid ringing bell for about two seconds. And I want it to ring twice to kind of indicate that it's a telephone. So the second thing we'll do on the trigger area is when it's entered by player Annie we're going to come over to our first time delayer and start the delay. And on the time delayer properties, I'm going to set the delay time to be four seconds. So the school bell will play for two seconds. And then we have an additional two seconds of silence. And then this time delayer will go off. And when this time delayer goes off, we're going to play that bell sound again for our second telephone ring. So we'll do a new logic connection when the delay is completed. Come over here again to the sound effects generator. And under general, we're going to scroll most of the way towards the bottom. And we're looking for that school bell sound. Right there. 
So that'll play it a second time. And then we need to wait for that second ringing to finish. So our time delayer here will do a new logic connection when the delay is completed. We'll invoke a second time delayer and we'll start that delay. And just like the other one on the properties for this, we're going to set the delay on this one to be four seconds as well. And then coming out of this time delayer then, the phone will have rung, and then we're ready for Candace to start talking. Okay, so to do this, what I'm going to do is I'd like Candace to just kind of be jabbering and um, just random phrases and things. And so that's why we have this randomizer, and we're going to feed that into this text displayer. And I've got a logic gate here so I can turn off that behavior if I want. So the first thing we'll do is let's set up this uh, text displayer. So on here we're going to do a new actor connection. And I'm going to connect that text displayer up to Candace. So that the text will appear over her head. And then in the properties for the text displayer, the text duration I'll leave as 2. The text style, we're going to set to connected actor, so it'll show up as text over top of Candace. And then we'll use the randomizer and the 10 trigger signals on that to select a text phrase to display. But the first thing I want to do is uh, on our time delayer back here, we need to do a new logic connection when that delay is completed. So when the telephone's done ringing, we're going to input into this logic gate. Okay. And then on the logic gate, new logic connection on output, we're going to come over to the randomizer and say action. And then this will invoke the text displayer. And I mentioned I want to be able to turn this behavior on and off. And so back here on this first time, de uh, time delayer, when the player enters the trigger area around that telephone, I want to make sure we'll do a new logic connection when this delay is completed. We're going to open up this logic gate. Okay. And so if we decide to restart the level, and we come over here, this is going to be our restart button for the level. And so the, the level starter, I want to do a new logic connection on Catalyze. When you first come into the toy box or you restart it, I want to close this gate. Okay. And that way, as you'll see, we're going to be setting up a loop here. So this time delay is going to go off. The second one, when the phone's done ringing, it's going to invoke the logic gate, which will invoke the randomizer, which is going to invoke the text displayer. And on the text displayer, we're going to do a new logic connection. When any text is dismissed, we're going to come back to this second time delay and start another delay. And so this text will display for two seconds and then it'll kick this off and four seconds later we're going to invoke the randomizer and select the new text phrase to display and when that goes away that'll turn around and invoke the uh, time delayer. And so every four or five seconds or whatever she's going to be saying something else. And the only way to break that cycle is to close this gate. And so that's why we have it set up so that when we restart the level, that will close the gate and break that cycle. Because once the phone rings and Candace starts, she's going to be talking <laughs> the entire time you're in this toy box. And it just kind of serves as a reminder of what you did. 
Okay, so the last piece of this is on the randomizer. And so we've already invoked that through the logic gate. So on the randomizer, we're going to do a new logic connection. On random trigger one, we'll come over to our text displayer. And it doesn't really matter. You can pick basically anything you want out of these categories, but this is what I chose for mine. The first one goes to the loss category. And she's going to say, that's no good. For random trigger two, we're going to come to the text displayer. And once again, we'll come to the loss category. And she's going to say, oh, well. I tried to pick phrases that a teenager might say on the phone. New logic connection, random trigger three. This one is going to come to the angry category. And she's going to say, that's so frustrating. Random trigger four. This one's going to go to the confused category. And under here, she's going to say, are you sure? And the next one is random trigger five. And for this one, we're going to go to the affirmative drawer, the affirmative category. And she's going to say, if you say so. For random trigger six. Now for this one, I thought it'd be kind of silly because you're eavesdropping basically on her conversation if you stand there and watch the phrases that come up. So under the noun category, I'm going to do a few under here, just some weird things. And it's <laughs> just about anything you pick under here would be kind of weird, but I chose salad dressing for that one. So who knows what she's really talking about. Uh, number eight, or nope, number seven is the next one. And again, we'll go down to that noun category. And under this one, licorice. And new logic connection number eight. And one more out of the noun category. Let's do garden hose. <laughs> no idea what she's talking about, but sounds interesting. All right, number nine. This one is going to connect into the comic sounds drawer. And for this, I kind of thought the uh, cha-ching might be interesting. She's a teenager. She goes shopping for clothes and stuff, so maybe she's talking about her friend about spending money or something. And then the last one, we're going to go to the encourage category. And she's going to say, that's great. So there we go. We've got 10 random phrases that Candace will say as she's yakking on the phone. And at this point, I believe that is everything. So, we can come over here and restart the level, which will turn on that dynamic trigger. And so now when we try to leave the yard, she's going to catch us. What do you think you're doing? And here we are back in the yard. So we have to find some way to distract her. And as we look around, we find the telephone booth. And Phineas gets the idea, hey, I'll call home on the phone. And there's no sound effect going off. That's interesting. <laughs> I 
but the text displayer is going. Huh. Very, very interesting. Okay. So let's go ahead and stop. So that resets. And because I need to get into the editor, we're going to come over here and push our button. Which will turn off that dynamic trigger. And now we can come in and take a quick look around. So on the trigger area here, this should have invoked that sound effects generator. Oh, I remember. I know what it is. On the properties for this, I forgot to set that. So we need to turn off the 3D sound at speaker or locator so that we can hear that wherever we are in the toy box. We don't have to be standing next to that. That's what we did wrong. And I'm just realizing too, I believe I forgot one thing. And so on this, I only want to do this once. So when I walk into this trigger area, we only want to do that one time. So after this invokes the time, de uh, time delayer, I want to do a new logic connection on that, on delay completed. Come back over here and deactivate this trigger area. And that means we need to come over to our level starter, do a new logic connection on Catalyze, and reactivate this. There we go. And now we should be good to go. So let's try it one more time. So that resets. And just to verify, let's go and run out of the radius. What do you think you're doing? <laughs> Nothing. All right, fine. Let's get you distracted. So now when we approach the telephone. Two rings. And now the text comes in. So now she's talking on the phone. And at this point, let's see, did I disable that? I think I did. Nope, I didn't do that, so I missed another step. <laughs> That's okay. All right, so we need to come over here. Let's turn that off so I can get into the editor, because there's one thing I forgot, which is kind of like the whole point of this exercise, and that is to disable this trigger. And so on the trigger area, new logic connection, when entered by player, any, we want to come turn off this dynamic trigger. Okay. One more time. <laughs> All right, we've reset. We'll test it again end to end just to make sure. So yep, dynamic trigger's on. She catches us, brings us back. Come over to the telephone booth. And now she's talking on the phone. Now we can leave the area because that dynamic trigger is turned off. And now we can go anywhere we want in this whole toy box. And the rest of the time she's going to be talking, just saying random stuff. So that's how we distract Candace so we can leave the yard. Next time, I'll build Ferb's collection quest that allows the boys to build their water slide. Until then, I want to wish you a safe and happy new year. I'll be back on Saturday with the final results of my Disneyland poll. Tomorrow's your last day to vote on the area of Disneyland that you want me to build next, so if you haven't voted, head over to my blog and do that now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on Saturday.